build of things or welcome if you're new i'm natalie and today's video is a collaboration that is hosted by valerie hargett i will put her channel and a link to the playlist down in the description box so that you can go check out all of the great videos from everybody else that's participating i know that we're gonna have a lot of great recipes in this collaboration um, and it is for thanksgiving dishes so everybody will be making things that they make for thanksgiving um, it might be a main course, a side, a dessert, an appetizer, just anything that you think goes for Thanksgiving was the inspiration for this collaboration. So that's what you'll find in all of these videos. I'm really excited about it because I was already going to be making some things for Thanksgiving anyway. Every year I go ahead and make as many of my sides as I possibly can that can be frozen ahead of time before Thanksgiving. That way, Thanksgiving Day, I'm free to do the things that you can't make ahead of time. So I was already planning to do some of that anyway. So when I found out about this collaboration, I was like, that's great. Cause um, you know, I was already gonna film a video making these things ahead. Um, but I'll, we'll get started. Mine are mostly simple recipes, classic recipes that most people have for sides. Um, but it just helps me prepare ahead of time. And yeah, so, and if you're new, if you've never been here before, um, I do share a lot of recipes and other things, um, canning, um, preparedness, gardening, lots of stuff like that. And I'm so excited to have you here. And um, if you enjoy, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. We'll get started. Okay, first up is this dressing. I'm just gonna cook four of these packages of Jiffy corn mix to package directions. Get that in the oven. And I'm making a double recipe here. So um, if you're just making a single recipe, just two of those. And I'll put it in the description box for a single recipe but everything that I am doing in this video is double so that I only have to cook once, but I'll have it for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Then once I got that in the oven, I started dicing up some celery and an onion, got that in a skillet with some butter and just let it cook. You can just let it cook till it's translucent, but I, if you've been here for a while and you're not new, then you know that I cook my onions a good bit more than just translucent. But, you know, you do it how you want to do it to your taste. After our cornbread um, has cooked completely and then cooled down some, we're just going to get it into a large bowl. I have a pot here because it's like a really large pot, but um, just get into a large bowl or something and crumble that up. Then we're going to add in some bread. I toasted this bread in the oven and there's about 12 pieces of bread here because it is a double recipe, like I said. And then two packages of saltine crackers. Um, the saltine crackers are pretty salty, uh, obviously, I guess, because they're a saltine cracker. Anyway, um, so when I got ready to add in my chicken broth, I went with a low-sodium chicken broth. But, you know, if you want to add regular chicken broth, that's completely up to you. Uh, we're going to add in a melted stick of butter and then three of these 32-ounce cartons of the chicken broth and give that a quick little stir. And then we'll add back in our celery and our onion. Um, I actually don't even add any more salt to this recipe um, just because I feel like there's already a lot of salt between the butter. Well, I used a salted butter and then the saltine crackers and then the chicken broth, even though it was low sodium and everything. But yeah, and we're going to add in our eggs. Um, I did about 10 eggs. A couple of mine were double yolk, but it was about the equivalent of 10 eggs or so. Whisk those up and pour those in as well. And then we're gonna give that all a good stir, and then we're gonna be ready to start adding in our seasoning. The only seasoning that I put in this is pepper, and then a little bit of poultry seasoning. I learned a long time ago, by mistake, that poultry seasoning will go a long way with just a little bit. I used a teaspoon of poultry seasoning for this entire um, double batch of dressing, and trust me, it's plenty. That's also kind of got like a little bit of salt to it too. But anyway, um, just separated these out into two aluminum pans because one, I'm going to put them in the freezer. So I need them in something I could freeze. And two, this way at Thanksgiving or at Christmas, I don't have to wash a dish. We're going to put those in the oven at 350 for about an hour, roughly, give or take, hour and 10 minutes until it's not jiggly anymore. And then whenever I'm putting mine in the freezer, I like to put the foil one piece of foil all the way down on top of the food, that kind of makes a barrier between the top foil and um, any moisture that might come in through the freezer and it'll keep you from getting freezer burn. 
and I'm just going to thaw these completely the night before and then heat them back up. They're fully cooked. They could be eaten at this point. Um, you're just reheating them. Next we have sweet potato souffle. Um, I got quite a bit of potatoes here. That's because I'm making a double recipe again. So I'm just going to peel my potatoes and then dice them up small, get them in a pot to boil and get them on the stove in a pot of water. And in true Natalie fashion, I needed to go with a bigger pot because I always misjudge how much room I need for things around here. Then we're going to cut up a, once we got them boiled and ready to mash, we are going to cut up a stick of butter, throw that in there so that it can melt good. These were half sticks. That's why it looks like I'm cutting up two sticks. But uh, for a single recipe, you'd be doing a half a stick. Mash that in there a little bit and let it get melted. And then we will start adding in our seasonings. I like to do um, brown sugar. That's a cup of brown sugar. And then I like to do ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And I'm doing a teaspoon of each of those. Um, you can do, you know, less if you don't, or leave those out if you don't like all of those seasonings. That's just always how I do my sweet potato souffle. And then a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Mix that together well. And then just give it a good little taste and see if you think you need to add anything else. We are going to add a candy coated pecan to the top of this. So I don't add anything else sweet right now. Um, it, it's already kind of sweet, but uh, because we're going to put that on the top, I don't want to overdo it. So for the top, I just melted a half a stick of butter and then I just chopped up some pecans. It's probably about, that's probably maybe a cup of pecans per topping. So there's probably like two cups there. And once that butter gets melted, we're just going to toss it in there with that. And then we're going to add in some sugar and also some cinnamon. I've got like an eighth of a cup of sugar there and probably about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix that together really good. And then we're just going to get our um, sweet potato mixture into our pans and add our pecan topping to the top of that. And if you don't like pecans or pecans, however you say it, um, I say pecan, some people say pecan. Uh, anyway, if you don't like them, um, you can also just top it with some marshmallows or just leave your topping off, but I promise it is delicious. Then we're gonna put our foil on there and these, I'm not even going to bake. Um, our sweet potato mixture is already cooked and everything, so we're not even gonna bake these before we put them in the freezer. We're just gonna put them in the freezer just like we, um, did with the dressing and cover them when we get ready to bake them though we'll take them out of the freezer let them thaw completely um i usually just put them in the fridge and let them thaw overnight and then we're going to bake them at 375 for about 20 to 30 minutes if they're not completely thawed you may need a little bit more time just to really get them heated through but your mixture is actually already cooked from cooking the potatoes next up is broccoli casserole um you could just use frozen broccoli i do that all the time if I'm making broccoli casserole with um, on like a weeknight or something. But for the holidays, I do usually go ahead and get some fresh broccoli. Just cook that. I got two heads there and I just cut it up small and put it in some water and boiled it on the stove. Then we're going to do about a cup and a half of mayonnaise and four eggs. Um, my broccoli, that's roughly probably about, I'm going to say five cups of broccoli. Then Traditionally, broccoli casserole would have a um, cream of mushroom. I love mushrooms, but I'm allergic to mushrooms. And so I don't eat them, obviously, because I'm allergic to them. That happened later in life. I used to love them very much as a kid. So I use this cream of um, cheddar soup. Instead, you could also use cream of chicken, or if you're not allergic to mushrooms and you like them, put that in there. We're going to add that in, add in our mayonnaise, and add in our eggs, Um and then some sharp cheddar cheese and just give that a good toss and then you can season it with whatever you like if you just want to use salt and pepper i like to use nature seasoning in this i just feel like it's a good mix of several things and it just goes really really well in it that's probably about a teaspoon or so of the um, nature seasoning there we're just going to um, get that into a couple of pans mix up our topping for our topping it's just a half a stick of melted butter, and then I've got two sleeves of Ritz crackers because I'm going to do 
a double batch, but uh, for a single, you just need one sleeve of Ritz crackers and just toss that in your butter really good. Then we're just going to get our mixture divided into our pans and sprinkle our Ritz cracker topping over top. Then we're going to go in the oven at uh, 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes roughly. And once it's cooked and cooled, then we will get it ready to go in the freezer just like we did the other ones. And since we've already cooked it and put it in the freezer when we're ready to have it, all we have to do is thaw it completely and heat it back up. It doesn't take very long at all to heat back up. And I usually do that again at like around 354, you know, just long enough to heat maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes if it's completely thawed. And our last side dish is loaded mashed potato casserole. This is a family favorite around here. I peeled this five pound bag of potatoes and got it um, cut up and cooked in some water on the stove and then got it ready to start mashing so that we could start adding in what we're gonna put. Um, I cut up my butter, it's a whole stick of butter because to this whole five pound bag of potatoes because um, I just cut it so that it would thaw faster. And then I'm gonna do half of a block of cream cheese and if you have not frozen potatoes before, things like this for an easy side dish with dinner, um, they freeze beautifully. They fr freeze so, so well. But we're gonna add in this whole container of sour cream, that's 16 ounces, and then this whole bag of sharp cheddar cheese, but I put any cheese that I have on hand in this uh, loaded mashed potatoes, it does not matter. And then we're gonna add in our um, seasonings. So I do some garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper, and then just give that a good stir. And then I like to add in bacon. Um, sometimes I cook bacon, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how busy I am or what kind of mood I'm in. I'm doing a cheat shortcut tonight, and we're just gonna add in about half of this bag. It was a very large bag of um, bacon bits. I just added in like half of it, so it's like a size of like one small bag. And this night we actually had one of these pans with our dinner and then the other pan I put in the freezer. So the one that I put in the freezer, I did not go ahead and put in the oven. I just put it, you know, let it finish cooling and got it put in the freezer right away. The one that I was going to have that night for dinner, I went ahead and put in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. And then when it came out, I just topped it with some more bacon and some chives and it's very pretty and it's very delicious and it just brings your potatoes to the next level. And that's it. Um, let me know in the comments what you like to make for Thanksgiving. And um, if you liked the video, then like I said before, if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll stick around and go check out everybody else's videos because I know there's gonna be a lot of great um, recipes in there. I'm really excited to go watch everyone else's videos too. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.